as long as Israel is fighting Hamas, that's going to be my number one topic. I have a lot of questions about what's going on in Gaza and why are they getting the press that they're getting. And they get a lot of support in Gaza. Look, I feel badly too that anyone should die who's innocent, who hasn't committed atrocities, should be a casualty of war. That's sad. It's very sad. And I feel badly about it. And then I think about Gaza. And I think about Hamas and the horrific, horrific, barbaric massacres of the people in the southern communities of Israel. And I don't feel that the war should stop or that any activity of the IDF should be curtailed while they're trying to get at Hamas's headquarters. I saw the photograph of Sinwar, the head of Hamas, kissing that journalist. Not only did Hamas glorify what they did with GoPros, but they had four journalists embedded with them. And these journalists showed the photographs of the massacres to AP, Reuters, CNN, and we think the New York Times. Were they just merely investigative journalists? I don't think so. I think they were Hamas operatives working for Hamas, had inside information from Hamas, and never gave it to anyone. They shielded Hamas and were part of the operation. If that turns out to be true, these four people committed war crimes along with Hamas. That's why I don't feel badly about Israel going into Gaza. I don't feel badly about Israel uncovering 130 tunnels. I wonder, with such an educated populace in Gaza, why did they allow this to happen to begin with? Gaza is there for, what, almost 75 years? For 18 years, they've had their own control of their territory. All you can think about is hating another race, another people for their religion. The entire Arabian Peninsula is made up of Muslims, except for one small area that was given to the Jews of the Middle East and Russia and other peoples who seek refuge from terror, from pogroms, from war. There's a sizable Ethiopian community in Israel. There's a sizable Cambodia community. The Thai workers that are now hostage, they were welcome in Israel. The Gaza laborers that worked on the farms, they were welcomed in Israel. So many different communities, Nepalese, you name it, they were in Israel. And Israelis go to their countries on vacation. So it is an international community. What is wrong 
with the Palestinian mentality. The people who are in Gaza, that all they could think of was hate, hate of the Israelis, hate of anyone who was in their country, and never, never with all their intelligence develop a self-governing system where they could become part of the international community. I don't understand. With 15 universities, a five-star hotel, clearly an upper and lower class, and that might have been more horrific for some people in the refugee camps than anything else, that there was this total inequality. Either you were corrupt and wealthy, or you were poor and still stuck in refugee camps since 1947? Where were the Gazan people? Where were the Palestinians? Where were the UN? Where was anyone wondering about the fate of these people who were in the refugee camps? Didn't anyone wonder about them? Didn't they think about their basic needs, their need for water, food, fuel, jobs? Interestingly enough, when Israel left Gaza, they left it with all the hydroponic plants, all the factories in place. The Palestinians could have taken over all that industry, grown their own food, made the pipes or whatever they needed for housing and construction. They didn't need to put people into slums. The square miles of Gaza is 141 square miles. Think about it. Let me give you the dimensions that make that up. It's 25 to 35 miles long by 3.5 to 7.5 miles wide. They got two point something million people living in that square mile territory. It's six times the size of Manhattan Island. Six times. Manhattan Island is only about 13 to 14 miles long and two to three miles wide, max. We think our square mileage is about 23 miles. Well, divide that into 141 and you come up with a territory that's six times bigger than Manhattan with a population that is what? A tenth of what we have? We have 9 million people on this island. 9 million. They got two in 141 square miles. Why did they have to pack them in like that? What was the purpose? When we know Hamas is under most of the refugee camps. We also know Hamas is under Boy Scout camps. We know they have triggering devices in mosques. We know they're under Sifra Hospital, which is now packed to the rafters with people. We found tunnels under upper-class child's bedrooms. Why does a population of intelligent people allow people 
who ferret around like little rats all over their communities and target Israel to survive and thrive and covet them. I don't understand. People who perpetuate war, who are terrorists, are destroying our world. It makes it so that our world is even more polluted than we've made it before. I absolutely don't understand. I'm not looking for Israel to stop the momentum of the IDF. If they've got a rhythm and they're making progress, my feeling is let it continue. Sure, if Hamas wanted to give up and they gave up all the hostages, I'd say, that's it, that's over with. And then we can set about putting a government into place in Gaza and rebuilding and putting in industry. But I don't hear anyone saying they're giving up. And I don't see a ceasefire that accomplishes nothing because Hamas has already stated they are going to continue to bomb Israel. And as it is, 200,000 Israelis are displaced because of the bombing that is ongoing in the Southern Territories and in the North. So no question, you gotta be able to do what's right for everyone. Is it a tragedy that people die? You bet. Is Israel opening up humanitarian corridors? Yes, they are. And they're being successful. They're able to move 50,000 people at a time, four hours a day. That is a win. And I see those people when they're coming out. They look to me like you and me. They're well-dressed and they're happy to be out of there in spite of the fact that Hamas wanted them to be human shields. So as far as I'm concerned, without getting a lot of hostages out, I don't see stopping when IDF has the momentum. I don't want Hamas to regroup. I don't want them to think of new strategies to murder people. I just as soon have it so that they're on the run and they're in the dark and they don't know what's happening on top. As far as humanitarian aid, Hamas doesn't have to keep all the fuel or the food. They could share it with the people, but they're not doing that. They're not that kind of person. People who slaughter others for pleasure, they're not going to turn around and try and help you govern. They gotta be eliminated. And then the world has to start thinking about what other terror groups exist and how do we minimize their impact on the rest of us. It's about time. Democracy stands for something and democracy makes it so the lives of all people will be safe. And I think that without Hamas, all people will be safe. Not just the Israelis, the Gazans who may be terrified of them as well. 
will be a lot safer when they leave the territory for good. And I understand Qatar is negotiating for the release of 10 to 15 hostages. Let's see how that goes and how many more we can get in the bargain. It's a start. Take care, everyone, and try to be positive, be hopeful, and know that this is not a society globally that can tolerate terrorists, autocrats, inequality that's unsustainable, and an environment that is unhealthy for all of us. We can only do better.